Next Wednesday is Holocaust Memorial Day, when we remember the systematic murder of six million Jews. Two-thirds of Europe's Jews were exterminated, and the few who escaped the murder suffered unbearable persecution, theft and grief. This Sunday, we are observing Holocaust Sunday a few days earlier in our online worship. We remember the murder of the Jews and also call to mind the victims of genocide in conflicts that have happened since that time. In some ways, it's a dark theme, but instead of being overwhelmed, depressed and defeated, we will look to the light. See how in this reading from Psalm 2043, the author asks God to send his light into the darkness of his experience. Vindicate me, my God, and plead my cause against an unjust nation. Rescue me from those who are deceitful and wicked. You are my God and my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Send me your light and your faithful care. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my joy and my delight. I will praise you with a lyre, O oh God, my God. My soul, why are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Helen was only 12 years old when the German army arrived at her hometown, Pambanias. She lived in Poland in a loving and happy family. As a child, Helen helped at her school library and enjoyed ice skating in the winter. She felt part of the community. But this changed when the Nazis invaded. Helen remembers, when they arrived, straight away they were looking for Jews. They wanted Jews for slave labour. It was immediate terror for the Jewish population. Synagogues were burned and all Jews were forced to wear a Star of David. My mother, brother and I stayed together, but we were separated from my father. We never saw him again. Helen and her mother were taken to Lot's ghetto where conditions were dire. Remarkably, they survived the liquidation of the ghetto and in 1945, they were liberated. After the war, Helen discovered what had happened to her father, Motosh. Motosh had volunteered to accompany a group of young children separated from their parents. 
He and the children he comforted were driven directly to Chalno extermination camp where they were murdered. Helen is proud of her father's choice, saying, he is my unsung hero. After the war, Helen moved to England, where she met her husband, George. It took Helen 47 years to speak about her experiences. In 1992, she started sharing her story so others could learn from it. In memory of Motosh Chimura, 1889 to 1942. The Nazis didn't just turn their hate towards Jews. Some sources suggest between 1933 and 1945, 17,000 deaf Germans were sterilized. And it's estimated that in an effort to rid Germany of useless eaters, who were thought to be a drain on society, nearly 2,000 deaf children were killed by lethal injection or starvation in what they deemed to be mercy killings. Newborn babies with physical defects or who they thought might be physically or mentally disabled, were removed from their parents and taken to special children's wards to be put down. Their parents were told that they died of natural causes. Forced abortions were also done on women suspected of carrying a death or otherwise disabled fetus as late as six months into pregnancy. In 1935, this became legal in Germany. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill can't be hidden. No one, after lighting a light, puts it under the bushel basket. But on the lampstand, so that it gives light to the whole house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. If you have one, you may now like to join me in lighting a candle to remember the victims of the Holocaust and to pray for God's light.
when faced with religious discrimination. Jesus calls us to be a light shining in the darkness. When faced with a global pandemic that threatens our well-being. Jesus calls us to be a light shining in the darkness. When faced with the darkness of shame and rejection. Jesus calls us to be a light shining in the darkness. When faced with human beings not being treated in a dignified manner. Jesus calls us to be a light shining in the darkness. When faced with discrimination for being different, Jesus calls us to be a light shining in the darkness. When faced with injustices caused in the name of religion, Jesus calls us to be a light shining in the darkness. When faced with people who are unable to live in their own countries and homelands, Jesus calls us to be a light shining in the darkness. When faced with a lack of generosity towards refugees and migrants. Jesus calls us to be a light shining in the darkness. When faced with genocide, Jesus calls us to be a light shining in the darkness. When faced with denial of the Holocaust. Jesus calls us to be a light shining in the darkness. We look to the light of Jesus so that as we reflect his light in the world, it is filled with the harvest of his good work. Amen.
Lord God, King of the universe, we praise and bless you. You have asked us to pray for the world of which we are a part. A world full of hate and pride, arrogance, error, prejudice and ignorance. Compassionate God, hear us as we pray for those who suffer today, for the horrors of the past, Holocaust survivors whose memories still bring them pain and hurt every day. God of compassion, receive our prayer. Lord God of truth, we pray for those who encourage visions of a world where we can respect each other, where we can celebrate diversity and enjoy the richness of each other's traditions, where we learn from one another and experience something of the mystery of God. God of truth, Receive our prayer. Lord God of pity and of comfort, we pray for those who are caught up in the world's conflict for children, men, women, families, refugees, those whose only crime is to live in the wrong place. Hear their cries. Bring pity and receive our prayer. God of mercy, hear us as we remember those who are dying with no one to care for them, no one to love them, to hold their hand, to be with them. Give us grace and energy and vision to know that your love is always with them. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Father, accept all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Still, I'm
May the light of God shine on us, transform our lives and brighten the world. Amen.